Hey friends, welcome back. Amanda with the Happy Homestead here. I am out in the garden and I just wanted to give you guys an update. It's been probably about a month, maybe six weeks, month and a half, six weeks, since I have planted everything here. And I've been coming out two to three times a week watering, because remember I have to haul water out here. So there is my water haul. I get about 21 gallons each time between two five gallon buckets and then a bunch of these one gallon water jugs. So I just finished watering. Things are looking good. There are some good, there are some bad, and there are some ugly. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you all of it. And in that order, we are gonna start with the good. And so you may remember that in these buckets, I have all of our squash. Summer squash and winter squash and melons. And some of them are growing much better than others, but in all fairness, they are so healthy. All of the plants look so good. This is some sort of melon. Of course, I don't know necessarily which is which, but that's the fun of it, right? I think this is a melon too. This is a squash and you can see, look, there is a fruit coming. So excited, a lot of gorgeous blooms here. The bees are all over the place. And I believe this is a zucchini rampiante, which I grew last year and did phenomenal. And I believe that because of, it'll focus here, this, this is the female squash right here and the flower, so it's the long one. So this is the rampiante, which is basically just a really long zucchini. It is a different variety. So all of the varieties I'm growing are Machada varieties. And so someone's gonna be like, what's Machada? <laughs> well, let me tell you, it's M-O-S-C-H-A-T-A. And it's a squash variety, both summer and winter, mostly winter. The summer is mainly the Rampiante. And the squash bugs don't like them. And so I experimented with this last year and grew nothing but Machada varieties. And I had no problems with squash bugs, zero problems. Whereas every year before, for decades, <laughs> farmers and gardeners before me, right, in problems with squash bugs. And so they just don't like the Machado varieties. It doesn't mean you may not see one, right? But it means that they are not gonna destroy your plant like they would the other varieties. So these are all Machado. When we come over here, right, we built this trellis, this arch trellis which so far is doing well and everything is starting to climb up. And look, I think this is some sort of butternut right there coming. There's another baby squash right here. So these are all looking good. These two or three buckets are watermelon. So this is some sort of watermelon here and here, and this is all watermelon. And I'm hoping the watermelon actually kind of trails out here into the onions, because the onions will be pulled. Mm -hmm. And so this can trail and have all kinds of rim. Mm -hmm. So the good is the squash. The squash looks fantastic. Also good, onions. Look, this is my first time having this much success with onions. Do you see these bulbs? Look at that. I am so excited. And then here's some red ones. These are red Creole. I got these sets from Dixondale Farms and I planted them, I believe, in February. Now over here, these rows, these are not as big. So these will get pulled when everything else gets pulled and they'll just be bunching onions. All right, also the good the electric fence. The Premier One electric fence has worked wonders it has been fantastic and none of my family has gotten shocked yet <laughs> so not even the dog no one has come over and mainly because i come over here and shut it off and disable it when we're all out here so no one gets shocked but nothing has gotten eaten by animals the animals have stayed out i am so excited and very grateful for this fence because i can see that it's going to be extremely useful for many years to come. Okay, also good, the peppers. 
The peppers are doing great. Um, there are a few plants here with some decent sized peppers. Look at this one. Oh, it just came off. I'll have to get that. But look at that one. So their peppers are doing great. The eggplant, the eggplant are doing okay. There's another one here. Oh, there's two in here. Yeah, I'm gonna leave those though. Um, we'll put this in our dinner tonight. But the eggplant are also doing well. Not as well as the peppers, but they're doing okay. I put some diatomaceous earth on them because of the flea beetles. So that's the white powder that you see. The tomatillos are doing phenomenal. They are growing so great. And the bees are all over them. They're happy. We are going to have some good salsa verde this year. Sunflowers, these are good. These are the mammoth gray from Baker Creek Sunflowers. And I have probably about 12 of them interspersed. And I have them near the tea posts so that as they get bigger, I can easily tie them to the tea post and give them the support they need. But the sunflowers are also doing great. Most of the tomatoes look fantastic. I'm very happy with this trellising system. These roller hooks are from Johnny Seeds. And remember, I built this trellising system two months ago. So um, link above to the video where you can see how I did this. But so far, very pleased with this. And the tomatoes are responding well to the trellising. We even have a gorgeous big tomato growing right there and another one there so overall they are doing good all right let's go to the bad the bad as you could probably see is the weeds <laughs> the weeds are out of control like oh my gosh when we were out here last weekend even my husband was like i thought the whole purpose was to keep the weeds away well yes of course it's the purpose <laughs> They are ruthless. And so just on my way up here this morning, I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Because there's a little small part of me that's like, whatever, just give up. Just let the weeds do what they need to do and harvest what I can. And then there's a much larger part of me that's like, no, <laughs> this is my garden. This is our food. This is my hard work, blood, sweat, and some tears. And so I'm going to make this work. So I've come up with two options and I'd really like to hear your input. The first option is the weed fabric. I'm seeing all other kinds of homesteaders and home gardeners do this, right? Where they get the really heavy duty permeable weed fabric and get the staples and then just put it down. And so what I would do is I would put a row of the weed fabric in between the peppers and eggplant. And then I would put one on the other side and like cut a slit um, on the end of the weed fabric and then like finagle that slit around the plant right so that the weed fabric overlaps so it's like there's three uh, rows of weed fabric for these two rows of plants right one on one end with a slit to come in one smack in the middle and then one on the other end with a slit to come over the other plants that's number one thought process and do the same here for the tomatoes and tomatillos the other idea I have is the wood chips um, because I'm afraid if I do the weed fabric and I invest that time and that money and then next year I want to rotate my crops, right? And space differently that this weed fabric is gonna have to be pulled up again. And, you know, I need to amend the soil and put more holes or more slits in the fabric and eventually it's just gonna degrade over time, right? And weeds are gonna come through. So the second option is the wood chips thinking that's a much more environmentally friendly, but also garden and work friendly option. Um, trim, like weed whacking as many of these weeds as possible without weed whacking my plant and getting a good four to six inches of wood chips on top. That'll help with moisture and it will help just overall with the soil too and keep the plant much healthier and not competing with these weeds for the nitrogen in the soil. 
So that's option number two. Those are the two things I've come up with. Now, ideally, the wood chip is the way to go, right? I, I kind of even know that. However, I need a lot of wood chips. And yes, y'all are gonna be like, chip drop, chip drop. <laughs> and I know, I'm a very aware of chip drop. I just don't think I can play around with that kind of timing and uncertainty. Um, because we have a locked gate at our property here and I'm about 40 minutes away and so I can't just drop whatever I'm doing at any moment and try to get here and pray the truck stays. So I'm actually going to contact some local companies and just see if I can finagle something with them to get a chip drop um, on demand and then start that process. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. This soil here we just spread out this is where the sweet potatoes are going to go so the slips i think are arriving today from fedex from johnny seeds and i don't even know if i have enough soil honestly i i don't know so we're going to plant as many slips as we can in here and all the sweet potatoes grow here all right so that's the bad with the weeds here's the ugly i don't know if you can see that i'm going to come in closer but I want you to look at this tomato plant. Do you see these leaves? Everything is curled up. And I have at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 plants like this. It's mainly this middle section here with a couple over here as well. See that one there? So, we believe, me and other local people, believe this is herbicidal damage. So the dirt that I purchased, we believe had some sort of herbicide in it, and that's what we're noticing. So it's very frustrating, it's very disheartening, but I'm trying to just keep moving forward. I'm not gonna rip the plants out. Um, I have sprayed with, or sprayed, but watered with fish fertilizer, uh, kelp fertilizer. I have put compost around the bottoms and I've put some of my mineral booster. It's a powder that I got from Azure Standard. Put some mineral booster around them. And I actually think I put some of that in and fertilizer when I planted these in the ground. So it's just, something I have to wait out. Um, doing some research and again talking with other folks, it's not going to hurt the plant, right? It does not look good, but I can see tomato blossoms. I can see tomatoes growing. These tomatoes are still going to be better for me than a tomato I find in the grocery store. I mean, it, not saying it's the best, but it's better than what I'll find in the store. So I'm just going to keep holding out, keep praying that, you know, taking care of these plants and doing what I need to do and hope that they, they grow into a healthier plant over time. All right, and I can't end on an ugly note, right? I just can't. So look at this. You know what this is? Look how huge it is, by the way. This is elderberry. This is my elderberry shrub that I purchased from Stark Brothers, I think two years ago. Two years ago. And it is out of control insane huge <laughs> love it the blooms are starting to open they smell so good the bees love it the bees are all over it and love it and so these flowers will turn into elderberries and it'll take a little while right now some of these flowers aren't even open yet they're just opening but these will turn into elderberries that we will harvest as much as we can. I may even harvest some of these flowers to make an elderflower tea or some elderflower soap. I don't know, but oh, they smell amazing and look great. So the bees are happy, I'm happy. We've got our three hives right here and we are absolutely gonna be harvesting some honey in about a month, a month and a half. So <laughs> I'm really excited about that too. 
The fruit trees are looking good. Um, there's a couple of apples and a couple of peaches. Nothing to write home about, but they're doing okay. So overall, I'm satisfied. But I also am not just going to sugarcoat it, right? I got work to do. I've got some major work to do in the amount of planting sweet potatoes and getting rid of these weeds one way or another. So again, I want to hear your feedback. Let me know about my two options or a third option that I hadn't thought about. I need all the help I can get at this point. Thank you for joining me on this garden update. I will see you next time. Stay healthy. Stay well. Bye-bye.